from lecture, we all know what an E3 ubiquitin ligase is and have a general idea of what they do. Uh, what we did not have a chance to talk about are the different kinds of E3 ligases. Generally, there are three classes which are really interesting new genes called rings, homologous to the E6 APC terminus called PEX, and ring between rings called RBRs. Today, we will focus on ubiquitin like protein that regulates part of the ring class of E3 ligases. <clears throat> Ring E3s are the largest class of E3 ligases with over 600 members in the human genome. Cohen ring ligases are a superfamily of ring E3s responsible for up to 20% of ubiquitin-dependent protein turnover in the cell. The Cohen ring ligase complex consists of a highly helical Cohen subunit that provides a scaffold for assembly of a functional E3 ligase. A ring subunit binds to the Cohen C terminal domain where it recruits and activates E2 ubiquitin conjugates for direct ubiquitin transfer to lysine residues. This process is regulated by NEDD8, which is a ubiquitin-like protein that shares nearly 60% identity with ubiquitin. The research question we will be reviewing today is how does NED8 elation regulate E3 activity? All right, so as there are many different Cullen and RBX subunits that can combine to form an E3 complex, many combinations are possible. The only structure that was able to be crystallized successfully was Cull5 RBX1, so they test this one as the wild type in this experiment, and they also test two Cull1, Cull5 hybrids, labeled hybrids A and B, one-fifth, and in this experiment, beta catenin ubiquitilation was measured for the, comple for the complex in the presence and absence of NED8. Uh, and clearly for the wild type, the presence of NED8 results in greatly increased ubiquitilation, as you can see in the farthest left column, as compared to the one right next to it. But how does NED8 accomplish this activation of ubiquitilation? Under normal circumstances, an inhibitor called CAND1 binds to the E3 complex to disrupt ubiquitilation, but when NED8 is bound to the E3 complex, a conformational change occurs and the CAND1 binding site is eliminated. With CAND1 unable to bind, ubiquitilation occurs at a much higher rate. This cartoon demonstrates the conformational shift that the E3 ligase undergoes after netilation. The binding of ubiquitin to the E2 complex is opened up by this process. This subsequently allows for ubiquitination of proteins, which has roles in protein degradation, apoptosis, biogenesis of organelles and ribosomes, DNA transcription, and much, much more. This vast array of functions for ubiquitin makes the regulation of its attachment vital. Therefore, future directions for this for studying E3 ubiquitin ligase are nearly limitless. Mutations in E3 ligase have been shown to have a major role in Parkinson's disease in juveniles. This, in addition to its potential roles in cancer creation and various other diseases, makes it very important to study. Further research could lead to major pharmaceutical developments in the future. Here are our contributions. This is our bibliography. Thank you. You've been a great audience.